Hey folks, welcome back to Truck and Trailer Tuesday on Tractor Time with Tim. Today I want to talk a little bit about why we chose the size truck we chose. Before I get too much into that, let me say what this video is not about. It's not about which brand of truck to buy. For instance, we looked at all of the big three trucks in, in this size range. There's a lot of similarities. Um, I'm certain that each brand, Chevy, Ram, Ford, absolutely certain that they'll do the job. I, I don't really think that matters. I'm sure in the comments section there'll be a whole bunch of you saying you should have bought a Ram, you should have bought a Chevy, you should have bought a whatever. But I want to focus on something different in this video. I want to talk a little bit about the size of truck. We ended up with uh, the F-350, the one ton size, the 3500 in, in the other brands. Well, why did we end up there? So first I want to tell you about my very first truck. We had a Mazda B2600. That was a cute little thing. It was a turquoise color. It was one of the last years that Mazda actually made their own trucks. We loved that little pickup. It was tiny. It was easy to get in and out of parking spaces. It was, it was fun to drive. It had a manual transmission. It was inexpensive. We really liked that. After about, I don't know, 12 or 13 years with that thing, we finally traded it for a Toyota Tacoma. We got a extended cab Tacoma, four cylinder engine, really the low end of the Tacoma model. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that truck too. We drove it for, I believe, 11 or 12 years as well. Now we would still have that pickup, quite frankly. It was, it only had 65,000 miles on it when we got rid of it. And the only reason we got rid of it was because it was just too small to pull Johnny around, even with the aluminum trailer that we had for it. So that's a situation that we could never have foreseen. We never thought we would have a tractor. We never thought we would have a trailer. And that's kind of becoming the story here. It's hard to foresee um, what all you're gonna need in the future. So we began looking for another truck and we did not want a full size pickup. We didn't want the half ton, three quarter ton, one ton pickup for a couple of reasons. Number one, we, we liked the ride of the smaller pickup. It just has a little better, softer ride. We also didn't like the difficulty of parking. We're in a suburban situation and we do a lot of parking in very small parking spaces. And at that time we had only Johnny and the one trailer. And so we did a lot of calculations there and we realized that, hey, we can pull our trailer not have any issues handling any of this uh, with a Honda Ridgeline. It kept that compromise for us. It was small, it rides very nicely, and it would handle Johnny and the trailer. Little did we know, again, we didn't foresee everything. Probably about three months after we got the Ridgeline, Casey came along. Unexpected, but Casey was here. So we got by with the Ridgeline for another year, and then uh, it began to, to be clear that our business was going to be growing. We probably would have even more tractors and attachments, and we really needed to look for something bigger. So that history actually kind of colors what we're trying to look for at the next step. I've had a lot of folks say that a half-ton pickup, either an F-150 or a 1500, would be plenty big enough for what you're wanting to do. And they're right. When I look at the towing capacities of the F-150, as long as you get the right axle combination and everything, you can get up into the 11,000 uh, pound towing capacity. It would do the job. And it would have a little softer ride than the uh, Super Duties, the three quarter ton, one ton size. But by this time, we're realizing that we've already had two pickups that have been too small for what we needed. So we felt like we needed to step up to the higher towing capacity and just more heavy duty truck. So now we've decided we need at least a three quarter ton truck. The question was then, do we need a one ton truck? I began to look at some of the specifications and I also began to research a little bit more online. That would be towing capacities and cargo capacities, as well as horsepower and all the, you know, all the fun stuff. After doing a little bit of research, I realized that there really wasn't any difference between the 250 and the 350 other than one additional leaf spring. Now there's some debate I don't know this, I'm not an expert. There might be a different axle under the 350 or at least in some uh, gear ratio situations. I'm not sure. But my dealer told me that the only difference between the 250 and the 350 was an additional leaf spring. What does that extra leaf spring do for the truck? It, it allows it to hold a heavier load. 
so when you put a heavier load on it will uh, the frame will go down against that spring and then that spring will keep it from sagging even lower okay. so that's how you get the higher gross vehicle weight rating is by having that spring so it doesn't even touch anything up no there. It, see that's why it, that's why the ride is not affected uh, on the empty truck it'll ride identically to a 250 it only touches when you've got a load on here okay. based on that we said hey we might as well go ahead and get the one ton, the 350 truck. After all, dad's always had an F-350. I suppose that's the number one reason is because if it's good enough for dad, it's good enough for me. Our goal is to be able to tow two of our tractors at the same time. We'd really like to tow uh, Casey, which we may have some news on that in a video coming up very soon, as well as Johnny at the same time. We've talked about getting a larger gooseneck trailer. So we think that total weight may be in the 10 to 12,000 pound range. That's okay, at this point it would be really easy to drift off into numbers, gross vehicle weights and all that, and I really want to go into that, but I don't want to do it in this video. We need to take our time and put together a complete video on weights, axle ratings, CDL requirements, and we'll do that at a later time. So let's focus today on some of the other items that we had to make choices on when we were looking at this truck. If we look at our little guy here, we see that he's got dual wheels, dually. Why didn't I choose a dually? Well, we saw that the full-size trucks were already really wide. And despite what Pontiac said several years ago, we don't necessarily agree that wider is better. Those dualies are really wide and really hard to get into a parking space. Similar to the width, we also had a little problem with the idea of the eight foot bed. Now some folks have commented about how our truck is still too small, we didn't get the eight foot bed, why didn't you get all that? It's not a real truck if you don't get an eight foot bed. I'm realizing that we can never get a truck big enough to please everybody, but in our situation, we're concerned about the parking, as we described before, in our suburban area. Probably even more so than that is the ability to navigate small neighborhoods. We went to a client's house the other night where the truck and trailer length were actually longer than his house lot was wide. So we had the front of the truck in one neighbor's lot, the back of the truck in front of another neighbor's house. And also we have the situation of a small cul-de-sac. You know, we're turning the truck around in a cul-de-sac could be a very difficult. This one doesn't steer very well, Christy. Hmm. I think ours steers better than that. I hope so. So we just felt like the eight foot bed was gonna be too long for us. And so far I'm really happy with that choice. For total length, we felt like the trade-off was best to take the shorter bed and a little bit longer cab. And that works well for us. We use this on longer trips. We've had that cab packed full. And once in a while we have a daughter to take along. She kind of likes having a nice seat back there. How about powertrain? There's two things in the powertrain that are worth thinking about. One is the engine. Two major choices for the Ford here. That's a gasoline engine and then this 6.7 diesel that we got. We chose the diesel. It's a lot more money. I don't know whether we made the right choice or not. There's a thread on greentractortalk.com that has a, a lot of discussion about should you choose the diesel or should you choose the gas. And in that context, they are talking specifically about the Ford. If you're interested in that, it's, it's a great discussion. And actually, most folks felt that the gas was the better value. We chose the diesel because of the extra power. I don't know if that's good. My dad recently had the whole DPF system go bad on his 2013 6.7 liter diesel. Um, gives me a little bit of concern about this going in the long term, but uh, that's what we've chosen. The other part of the powertrain that you have a choice on is the axle ratio of the rear end. Historically, you'd want to choose one of the higher ratios, say a 410, if you're pulling heavy loads or carrying heavy loads. This 6.7 liter diesel is so powerful that I don't think that's an issue anymore. We chose the 331. That's the fastest geared rear end available. Hopefully the best fuel economy. We still have an enormous amount of power with this truck. Overall, there's lots of choices. Even once you've chosen the major brand that you're going to be going with, 
There are so many options. It takes a long time. Don't just go to your dealer's lot and just say, oh, that one will be good enough. Study your lesson, especially if you're going to be carrying those heavy weights, as we talked about before. You need to work with your trailer dealer or your trailer manufacturer to get that perfect balance if you're trying to stay out of the CDL. We'll go into that in more detail, as I said, but I just want to say enough here to say don't buy without thinking that through. Okay, by going through some of the choices that we've made and why we've made them, we're not suggesting that you make the identical choices. We're just hoping to provide some discussion that can help you to think through those choices. You may choose a different choice at every turn. That's fine. Our objective is just to help you think through the options. And I hope you're enjoying Truck and Trailer Tuesday. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Johnny, you've driven right up here on the front. Oh, look at this. It's got a little... There we go. Now Johnny's not going to run around anymore on us. He'll stay pretty much where he put it. But now the ramps are coming down.